Hey you guys, today we're making a dish that I'm surprised I haven't made yet for this channel, and this is tartiflette, or tartiflette depending on where you're from. This is a dish that I've been wanting to show you guys for a while now, so I'm very happy that I'm finally getting to it. Let's get started. But first of all, let's learn where tartiflette is. Tartiflette is actually a French casserole that became very popular in the French Alps in the 1980s, but it's been around since the 18th century. It's usually made with potatoes, bacon, onions, white wine, some creme fraiche, and some cheese. And today I'm doing my own Americanized version of it. This may be kind of controversial, but uh, we shall see. First thing I'm going to do is take my potatoes. You can use Yukon Gold potatoes, but I'm using Honey Gold potatoes. I prefer the smaller potatoes. To me, they're easier to work with. And I'm just going to quarter these so that they're bite-sized. And usually you boil the potatoes, but I actually want to roast these. The controversy is starting very, very early. So I'm going to put these in a bowl, and I'm going to smother these with some olive oil. And I like to use olive oil because it just adds a lot of flavor. I'm adding some Herbes de Provence and some salt and pepper, and then I'm just going to give this a good toss. I'm placing this on a baking sheet that's been lined with aluminum foil, and this is going to go in a 400 degree oven for 35 to 40 minutes. Be sure to double check to make sure that these potatoes are fork tender. Next up, I'm taking half of a large white onion, and make sure your knife is nice and sharp for this because you're going to want to julienne your onions. In the end, you're going to get the best result for this. Next up, we're going to slice up some bacon, and we're doing about quarter-inch slices here. This is going to help the bacon cook a lot faster. Next up, in a dry stainless steel pan cranked up to medium heat, we're going to start cooking up our bacon. Once you see that the little bits of bacon are starting to brown, we're going to add our onions, and we're going to cook these for a little while. Now, we don't want these onions to caramelize. We do want them to be more softened, more translucent, and a little bit browned, but do not caramelize them. Sorry, I really, really like that sound. I added some white wine to both deglaze the pan and add some more flavor. You can use any type of white wine you'd like. I'm using Chardonnay. And I added some salt and pepper, and then that's it for our onions and bacon. I put that to the side while I make our sauce. We're making a nice white cream sauce for this. I'm taking some butter and some all-purpose flour to make a roux. Make sure when you do this, it's over medium heat, and that you cook all the bits of flour out of there before you add your liquid. And I'm adding one cup of chicken broth. You can use chicken stock if you'd like. And I'm just going to give this a mix and make sure that it stays thickened. You don't want any chunks in this. And as you can see, it has thickened a little bit more, which means it's now time to add our milk. You're going to want to use whole milk for this. And at this point, lower your heat a little bit. This will thicken as it goes. Just continue whisking. And then we're going to add a little bit of sour cream. You could use creme fraiche for this. That's what's traditionally used. But my store doesn't have creme fraiche, so I'm using sour cream. It's the next best thing a little bit of Dijon mustard, some salt, some pepper, and that is it for your sauce. This is good stuff. All right, now it's time to assemble our casserole. I'm taking a 10 by 6 inch baking dish, and I'm going to add my first layer of potatoes, all my onions and bacon, a little bit more potatoes, the rest of them, so that you have a nice second layer here. And now we're going to add our sauce, and we're going to pour that right on top. Now, this next part is extremely controversial, and I hope I don't lose any viewers from this, especially my French viewers. Full respect for you guys. Tartiflette is normally topped with Revolution cheese, which you cannot find here in the United States because it's made with raw milk. You can specially order it, but it is very, very expensive. However, I don't live in the French Alps. I live in a small town in Florida, and it's 9,000 degrees outside. So I'll be taking my own spin on it. First, I'm going to take some panko breadcrumbs, and I'm going to add some fresh garlic. And then I'm going to use some fresh thyme. That's right, not rosemary. We're using thyme this time. Ha ha ha. And I'm going to add some melted butter. I added a little too much melted butter, so just use a tablespoon less than I did. That'll be in the description box down below, so don't worry. And after giving that a good toss, I'm going to top this with some Swiss cheese. You could use brie or camembert, but I would rather use this. I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. And then on goes our panko breadcrumb topping. And this is going to go in a 350 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes or until the top is golden brown. And as you can see, this looks really, really, really good. And the aroma in my kitchen right now is amazing. But seriously though, if you can somehow get your hands on Revlochon cheese, go for it. It's the traditional way to do it. And I'm sure it's amazing. I personally have never had it before and I would like to try it one day. But after finally plating this and topping this with some more fresh thyme, I can safely say that this is one of the best casseroles you will ever make. You can taste every ingredient, the herbs de Provence, the bacon, the white wine, the thyme, the garlic, everything. And even though this is not traditional, it's not authentic, I mean there's a reason why I titled this video American Tartiflette, because it's not traditional. But having said that, I have full respect for the original dish, where it comes from, and the people who created it. 
because it's literally one of my favorite dishes. And it's totally worth it after all that hard work. So please, if you're trying to find something else to make for dinner, something different, something that you've never had before, go for this dish. You will not be disappointed. Alright guys, I hope you all enjoyed this one. This was actually a lot of fun to make. So please, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.